Are you wanting to get into video editing? Perhaps some 3D rendering is your thing, or maybe graphics design. You'll need to build or purchase a computer that can handle that intense workload. When I started doing YouTube, I decided to build myself a PC that could game and edit videos. And if you're thinking about following in my footsteps and you want to learn from my mistakes, stay a while and listen. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. What you can see on my left here is all that's left, <laughs> left, left, get it? This is all that's left of my computer after making two extensive upgrades, hopefully my last two upgrades. Unfortunately, I had a component failure that forced my hand to upgrade yet another PC part. And I've actually upgraded this thing quite extensively over the years. Now, if all you wanna know is what happened to my PC, Feel free to skip ahead below using the timestamps, but if you want a little bit of background story, stay tuned, listen up, because I'm about to explain what was in the PC prior to making these upgrades. The original PC started about two years ago, and I made a video on this, but it was one of my really early videos, so it's just kind of like a build list almost. I wouldn't suggest you go back and watch it, but if you want to, I'll leave it down below or up top here, and you can check it out at your leisure. The parts that I used for this build were the Ryzen 9 3950X. It had 16 cores and 32 threads. It was a monster of a CPU back in the day. Now that I think about it, it's still kind of a monster compared to some CPUs. But I knew I could use it for editing and gaming, which is exactly what this PC would be built for. Cooling the CPU was the Lian Lee Galahad 240. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler. It's got RGB on it. And I knew I wanted liquid cooling for the Ryzen 9 because it actually recommended a 280 millimeter AIO. But the 240 did fine actually up until recently. The motherboard I paired with this was the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi. It's AMD's X570 chipset. It had PCI 4.0 connectivity, lots of options as far as USB ports, and 2.5 gig LAN. Everything that I needed for a workstation performance PC. I paired this with 32 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z RGB RAM at 3200 megahertz. It was a small upgrade over the standard 16 gigabytes that most gaming PCs were running about two years ago. Now it seems 32 gigs is the standard, what with DDR5 and all. The storage drive that I used for the operating system and some base programs like launchers and stuff was the Samsung 970 EVO 500 gigabyte. I also paired this with more storage a Samsung 860 EVO one terabyte, which was my game drive, and a Western Digital Blue two terabyte for all of my video footage and large files. The GPU I decided to go with was the EVGA RTX 2080 Ti XC Gaming. It's a great card. I picked it up on EVGA's B stock listing. It has 11 gigabytes of VRAM and it produced 3070 like performance. I decided to house all of this hardware inside the Lian Li Langcool 2 mesh. This case got awesome reviews and I've loved using it over the past two years or so. Now I have a couple gripes about the case, which I'll mention in the next section. For power, I went with the EVGA Supernova GA 750 watt. It's a fully modular 80 plus gold rated power supply and it did fantastic and produced plenty of power for my RTX 2080 Ti and Ryzen 9 CPU. That was everything that initially started in this system. And if you want a little bit more detail about it, you can check out the video, I'll leave it down below, but please don't judge me on it. It's one of my earlier releases, so I'm not as comfortable in front of the camera as I am now. Of course, what type of computer nerd would I be without upgrades? Upgrades are like the backbone of custom computer building. The whole point of building your own PC is so that you can design it and create it based on your needs and allow room for expansion later. Think of it like being a car enthusiast. In addition to being into custom PC building, I'm also into vehicles. So when I buy a car, the first things I think of is how can I modify this, change the wheels, change the suspension, upgrade the engine. Having a custom computer is the same way. You start out with something simple that's within your budget and you expand upon it, upgrade it, and get yourself more performance later on. As your editing skills and workstation performance demand increases, you'll start running into what's called PC bottlenecks. At least that's what happened to me. I edit with Adobe Premiere Pro in case you're wondering. Now I'm not the most knowledgeable with software and optimization. Default settings are usually what I go with. 
but I did notice a significant improvement to my experience with each upgrade I made to the build. Over the last two years, I ended up making six upgrades to this PC. First, I started with the CPU. The 3950X I picked up used, and the 5000 series of Ryzen processors was just coming out right around when I built this PC. So I knew I wanted that 5000 series, and now the build sports the amazingly powerful Ryzen 9 5950X. It's still 16 cores and 32 threads, just a little bit faster and slightly newer. Plus, it was a drop-in upgrade. Another bottleneck I ran into is with my RAM. I knew that was gonna be the case and I probably should have gotten two 16 gig sticks of RAM when I bought it, but I wanted to populate across the entire motherboard, so I bought four eight gig sticks. Therefore, I needed to remove those and buy an upgraded kit. So what I did is I went with 64 gigabytes of G-Skills Rip Jaws at 3200 megahertz. With more intricate editing, like adding features, overlays, and extra video footage over top of the base footage, I ended up maxing out the 32 gigabytes of RAM. So obviously the next step up would be 64 for me. And it was totally worth the upgrade. If you're gonna be doing any kind of editing, something with a timeline, maybe music production, RAM is what you want. When I built this PC was right around when COVID hit and I knew the 30 series is what I wanted in this computer. Now the 2080 Ti was great, but I really wanted something like a 3080 or a 3090. If the 3080's MSRP would have been a reality back then, I would have had a killer deal and picked that thing up for myself. However, I just like a bunch of people went to Best Buy I got in line, waited all morning. I think I got there at like 2 a.m. just to get a graphics card on one of those release drop days that everyone decided to go to. I mean, the line was wrapping around the building. It was crazy. By the time they got to me, there was no 3070s. There was no 3080s, clearly. All they had left was 30... I think all they had left was 3060 Ti's and 3090s. So naturally for an editing computer, I didn't want to go with the 3060 Ti that only had eight gigabytes of RAM. I might as well just stay with my 2080 Ti. So I opted for the 3090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And you know what? I don't regret it one bit. With all of the editing that I was doing, I needed to upgrade the storage. I knew that would come sooner than later and actually it came a lot sooner than later. So prep for that if you're thinking about doing high resolution footage, especially. I started out with two terabytes of storage on my hard drive. I ended up upgrading to four terabytes of storage, not even a year later. I've been using that ever since and it's been fine. Now granted, I save all my raw footage, edited footage, B-roll, uh, thumbnails, scripts, everything is on that hard drive. So I think I'm doing a lot with not that much storage space. I also upgraded my game storage drive. It was a one terabyte SATA SSD. I ended up upgrading to a two terabyte NVMe SSD, the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. I got it on sale during Black Friday or something like that last year, and I got a really good deal on it at the time. Now, storage drives are really cheap. You can get two terabytes of NVMe for right over $100. So that's, now is a good time to be building a PC. And finally, I ended up upgrading the power supply, but not for the reason you would think. The 750 watt power supply powered the 3090 just fine. The problem was my PC kept shutting off randomly on its own. And I did a bunch of troubleshooting and everything. I ended up pulling everything out of the case and putting it on like a test bench setup. Uh, everything powered on fine. However, that was with a different power supply. I didn't pull the power supply out of the computer case. So I purchased a new power supply and I went with the Seasonic Focus PX850. It's fully modular, has 850 watts, and it's an 80 plus platinum rated power supply. I actually never figured out what was going on. I threw that power supply in the build and I ended up keeping the EVGA 750 watt one that I had. I put it in another build that I still use here around the house and that PC has not shut off since. So whatever was going on, it might've been a grounding issue. Maybe a cable was touching where it shouldn't have been but nothing's wrong with that other power supply and now i've got 850 watts instead of 750 so i'm cleared for the future as well oh lastly i kind of did a small upgrade when i bought the power supply i bought a cable mod custom cable kit i did a 24 pin silver and black connector as well as two eight pin connectors 
uh, connected together using like a cable tie type of thing. But now I guess I'm in need of the 12 volt high power connector to plug into my 3090. Maybe I'll pick that up just to complete the build. Always upgrading, right? Now on to the sad truth. If you jumped ahead, you didn't worry about the old stuff, this is it, this is what happened. It was finally time for Lee and Lee to say goodbye. Yes, I know, unfortunately, I decided to just change directions with the build. Lee and Lee, you're a tank. There was frankly two issues with the Lee and Lee hardware that was being used in my computer. First of all, the Galahad AIO that I had locked up on me. I don't know why it stopped working. The pump just froze up one day, I'm guessing. Uh, I looked in hardware info. Everything showed that it was still getting power and the, the blades were still spinning. It still showed RPMs and stuff like that. It must have just clogged up. I don't know what it is with me and AIOs clogging. I had trouble with my NZXT H1. Now I've got trouble with this AIO. It must just be a thing for my area. I, I'm not sure. But uh, it locked up. The CPU was overheating instantly. As soon as I would turn the computer on, the fans would ramp up. At idle, just sitting there on the desktop, my CPU temps were like 78 to 80 degrees Celsius. Not good for a PC that's about to go under heavy workloads while editing. Another thing I was tired about with the build is the Lian Li Langcool 2 mesh is a very heavy case. I don't know what makes it so heavy. If it's just all the little doors and moving parts to it, there's double glass on the front and back, but this thing is a tank. I mean, lugging it around to clean it out is just a huge pain. There's no filter on the front or anything. It's just an open mesh. The side of it has those mesh flip down panels. It's just, it's all open air, which is great for airflow, but bad for dust filtration. So I'm just over it for that as well. And lastly, I'm just done with RGB. Uh, RGB is great for some things. Some people love RGB for a workstation build where I have it sitting on my desk. I just don't want it distracting me all the time. I know I can turn it off, I realize that, but then what's the point of even having it in there? So I might as well just put it into something that doesn't have RGB and doesn't utilize that and save myself the cable management space. So let's talk about the upgrades I made. In fact, easy, right? I wish it was that easy. This is the finished product of my new editing rig. The two items that I changed are the case and the all-in-one liquid cooler. I ended up going with the Fractal Design Torrent. Now the torrent comes in three different sizes. You can get the standard model, which I have, or the nano or compact. So it doesn't have a whole lot of RGB, which is exactly what I wanted. It can hold my AIO that I wanted to use for it, and it gives me the dust filtration that I was asking for. Perfect case choice for this build, and it's got great airflow too. I did remove the two front 180 millimeter fans so that I could mount the liquid cooler. The front is the only location you can fit the radiator, Besides in the rear, but that only fits a 120 or 140 millimeter AIO. And I wanted to use a 360 millimeter. So a front mounted AIO was my only option. Speaking of the liquid cooler, I ended up using MSI's Core Liquid S360. It's a 360 millimeter AIO with an LCD pump head display. It's got quiet operation, had great temperatures in my testing, and the software was so easy to use, I'd be silly to pass up using this thing for myself. And a huge shout out to MSI for sending this over and sponsoring the editing build. I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Okay, last but not least, I feel like this is the most important part of the video. I'm wrapping everything up. If you're thinking about building your own editing PC, the beginning of the video was kind of just me taking you along for the ride. This is the most important part. Like, put a little star around this thing, ring some bells. This is where you should be watching the video. And I guarantee you most people have already clicked off of it by now. So if you stayed, you got the good stuff. I'm gonna give you four recommendations for your editing PC build. Recommendation one, go with an air cooler. I know I'm using liquid cooling for this thing, but if you're thinking about making money with your PC, air cooling is the way to go. It's reliable, there's only one moving part, you've got a fan. And if it stops working, you can see that it's not spinning anymore. So if you use a tempered glass build like this one, there's glass on here normally. Then you'll be able to just look inside and see that the fan stops spinning. If my all-in-one liquid cooler stops working, I've got to monitor my CPU temps to know that if it happened or not. Luckily, my MSI's S360 has a LCD readout screen, which I can change programming on and show my CPU coolant temps. 
Number two, start with a good base like I did. The motherboard, the operating system hard drive, and the power supply are your most important components. Don't skimp out on those because they're the hardest things to change. The motherboard and the operating system hard drive map together when you do Windows. So if you change one of those two components, your Windows licensing key may deactivate and you may have to either purchase another one or reset it or re-log into it, something of that sort. Sometimes it just works, but on occasion that will mess up. And if you decide to keep your old hard drive and switch to a new motherboard, you're gonna have operating system problems because they may not be compatible. You might go from AMD to Intel, well, the Intel drivers for Windows are different than the AMD drivers and vice versa. Number three, get something with good dust filtration to mitigate your downtime. Like I said, if you're trying to earn money with this PC, if it's going to be helping you produce a product or a service and you want minimal downtime, get something with good dust filters. This fractal torrent case I have is an excellent choice for an editing PC or workstation PC because the front panel pops right off and I can take it out and clean out the dust on it. And then from the front as well, I can pull the filter out of the bottom from these bottom intake fans and clean that out too. I don't even have to move the PC. Both filters come off without having to pick this thing up. That's really easy to do and I can do it every other week if I want to. Mitigate the downtime, make it easier for you. Number four, get a case that can house plenty of hard drives. Either that or build yourself a NAS. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage, in case you were wondering. I have two 3.5 inch hard drives in this build right now, but some case manufacturers have additional hard drive trays. Actually, Fractal makes some as well in some of their other case series designs where you can add hard drive storage to the front of the case to advance and kind of turn it into its own NAS. Thanks for listening to my Upgrade Path editing PC. Hopefully I gave you a couple tips and tricks if you're deciding to build your own at home. And if you wanna see when I decide to take on bigger projects like building my own network storage, make sure you subscribe down below and click that bell icon so YouTube will notify you when we release new content. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next video. It got me stone cold.